Hello, parents. I'm Dr. Sumquing Cho, the co-director of the Center for Child and Family Science at the Education University of Hong Kong. Many parents find it challenging to foster their young children's self-care skills. Some of them tell me that their children are very lazy and they do not know how to motivate their children to perform self-care tasks. Some parents think that their children are still young and they are unsure what children can do. In view of these parents' worries and concerns, I will give a presentation titled Let Kids Go, Let Kids Grow, The Art of Promoting Young Children's Self-Care Skills. In the next hour, I will introduce to you what self-care skills include and what kinds of self-care skills young children of different ages are expected to demonstrate. I will also discuss what parents should and should not do to motivate young children to perform self-care tasks by themselves. Finally, I will share some effective strategies for fostering self-care skills in young children. Here comes the first myth. Self-care skills refer to dressing skills. Is it correct? The answer is partially correct. Self-care skills refer to a collection of life skills that are relating to caring for oneself. It covers many different aspects of our lives. Roughly speaking, it includes eating, dressing and undressing, grooming, toileting, and daily living at home and school. Whoa, here are some food and drinks that children like a lot. These food and drinks indeed involve different eating skills that children have to master during their early childhood years. The first type is oral muscle control. Examples include chewing and swallowing. The second type is drinking skills. Examples include pouring water from a bottle into a cup. The third type is eating skills. Examples include eating with a spoon and cutting soft food with a knife. The fourth type is handling food packaging, such as how to open a packet of biscuits. Parents, when your children feed themselves, do they often make the place dirty? Have they ever put the food near their nose rather than into the mouth? If the answers to the above questions are yes, the eating skills of your children are not well developed yet. The next skill that I want to discuss is toileting skills. Some parents tell me that their children do not know how to express the need for toileting and their children often wet their pants before reaching the toilet. Some parents tell me that their children do not know how to wipe after toileting. In both cases, there is room for improvement for their children's toileting skills. Toileting skills start with the ability to express the need for toileting. Besides, children should be able to distinguish between boys' and girls' toilets and identify the proper place for toileting. During toileting, children need to know how to undress and dress well so as to avoid getting wet. They should also be able to sit on the potty or use the toilet properly. Last but not least, children need to know how to wipe after toileting. The first type of dressing skills is the ability to put on and take off different clothing items, such as shoes, socks, pants, vests, shirts, coats, and t-shirts. Another type of dressing skill is the ability to handle different types of clothing fasteners, such as hook and hop fasteners, shoes laces, zippers, and buttons. Here, it should be noted that 
some clothing items are more difficult to handle than the others. I will tell you more about this a bit later. Next, I will talk about grooming skills. Some children fail to clean their nails properly after they sneeze. They are also unable to comb their hair neatly. After washing their hands with soap and water, and wipe their hands with a towel, there are still some soup bubbles left on their hands. With no doubt, these children do not have good grooming skills. So, what do grooming skills include? Indeed, children need to learn how to take care of their different body parts, including their hair, eyes, nose, teeth, face, and hands. They should know how to comb their hair, brush their teeth, and rinse their mouth. Besides, they need to know how to wash their body, including their hands, face, hair, and their whole body. The last type of self-care skills is daily living skills. Some parents complain that their children never tidy up their toys after playtime and clean up the table after meal time. These behaviors suggest that the children's daily living skills are still far from satisfactory. What comes towards daily living skills? The first skill is the ability to tidy up daily necessities. For example, at home, children should be able to put away their toys after playing with them. At school, they should be able to put the books and stationeries back in their original place after use. Second, children need to know how to do cleaning such as wiping the table and cleaning a spoon after finishing the meal. Third, children are expected to use various facilities and equipment at home, such as opening and closing a door, hanging a jacket on a hanger, turning on and off the television. Lastly, when they go out, they need to know how to use various public facilities, such as elevators and lifts. Now, let's move on to discuss the second myth about self-care skills. Some parents think that self-care skills are fully developed at ages 3 to 4. In other words, they no longer have to teach children about self-care skills when their children reach age five. Do you think the above is true? The answer is no. As children grow older, they often become more capable of taking care of themselves. However, it should be noticed that children at different ages have different self-care skills to learn. For example, we expect children aged 3 to 4 to be able to wash their hands with soap by themselves. When they reach age 5, they are expected to be able to bathe themselves. When they get even older, they are expected to be able to pack their school bag according to the school timetable. They should also be able to put relevant items into the school bag and take out the irrelevant ones every day. Here comes the last myth about self-care skills. Some parents think that it is not very important for children to learn self-care skills, as poor self-care skills do not affect other aspects of development. Do you think that this belief is correct? The answer is again no. Try to imagine how a child feels if he or she discovers that all other children in the class know how to wear socks properly, and he or she is the only one who cannot accomplish the task. 
this would make the child question his or her own abilities, and this affects his or her self-concept. Furthermore, when a child does not know how to take good care of himself or herself, he or she may look dirty and act clumsily. This may in turn affect his or her social relationships. On the contrary, if the child has good self-care skills, he or she is more likely to do well at school as he or she can follow teachers' instructions closely, mark down carefully what homework they have every day, put away irrelevant things and take out relevant items during the transition from one activity to another activity. As a result, his or her learning performance is likely to be better.